Here's the translation into American English. Attention coffee drinkers. Is drinking coffee good for your health or harmful? Latest research from Harvard University in the United States reveals, don't touch it while drinking coffee, or you might be inviting cancer. Coffee lovers, take note. Today, I'm going to share something from the wee hours of the morning. Shawnee sits in a brightly lit office, feeling like he can't keep going. He casually picks up the coffee on his desk and downs it in one go. This is his fourth cup tonight. The refreshing effect of the coffee seems particularly good, making him marvel at how coffee truly deserves its reputation as life-saving water. But then, he begins to wonder if drinking so much coffee at once is a bit inappropriate. Why has coffee become the elixir of life in everyone's eyes? For urban white-collar workers like Xiao Su, coffee is the life-saving water that sharpens the mind and wakes you up. When feeling exhausted at work, a cup instantly revitalizes, energizes, and powers through overtime. Intensive work made him addicted to coffee shortly after joining the company. Without a cup a day, he feels off. For others, besides boosting energy and relieving stress, coffee also comes with some social attributes. A related report indicates that coffee's role in facilitating communication and socialization in the workplace is becoming increasingly important. Social factors contribute to 30% of coffee consumption. In other words, coffee has become a social tool for some people. But where does coffee's magic come from? Coffee has an invigorating effect, which is why most people call it the elixir of life. Typically, after intense mental or physical activity, the central nervous system secretes a substance called adenosine. When adenosine binds to its receptors, the body gradually relaxes, and drowsiness sets in. However, when you drink coffee, caffeine quickly binds to adenosine receptors before adenosine can, preventing drowsiness. But is coffee good for the heart? Some people feel their heart racing after drinking coffee, but they still want to drink it. Does coffee really affect the heart? Increased heart rate after drinking coffee may be due to caffeine's effects. Caffeine can increase brain excitability, leading to symptoms like rapid heartbeat and dizziness in some people, known as caffeine intolerance. Adjusting coffee intake based on individual tolerance can alleviate these symptoms. Is coffee good for the body? A 16-year study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2017 analyzed 520,000 people from 10 European countries. The results showed that compared to non-coffee drinkers, those who drank three or more cups of coffee a day had a 12% lower mortality rate and lower rates of cardiovascular disease and stroke. Similarly, another analysis in 2017 involving 185,000 middle-aged participants, including African Americans, Native Hawaiians, Japanese Americans, Latinos, and various other ethnic groups, found that compared to non-coffee drinkers, those who drank four or more cups of coffee a day had an 18% lower mortality rate during the study period. This was the first large-scale study across ethnicities linking coffee consumption to longevity. The research showed that regular coffee consumption can extend life. Even Harvard University acknowledges the benefits of coffee. A study from the Harvard School of Public Health analyzed over 1.27 million samples and concluded that coffee intake is inversely associated with the risk of cardiovascular disease. People who drink three to five cups of coffee a day have the lowest risk. Additionally, recent research has found that coffee can prevent and delay degenerative brain diseases. Alzheimer's disease, the most common neurodegenerative disease and the fourth leading cause of death among the elderly globally, currently has no cure. People with Alzheimer's gradually lose their memory and ability to perform daily tasks, sometimes even failing to recognize family members. In China alone, there are over 10 million people with Alzheimer's disease, and the number of patients doubles every decade. Fortunately, coffee may help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Caffeine in coffee stimulates the central nervous system, increases alertness, and produces rapid and clear thinking. 
It has a protective effect in acute and chronic neurodegenerative diseases. A tracking survey overseas showed that people over 65 who drink tea or coffee regularly have a 37% and 20% reduction in symptoms of dementia, respectively, compared to those who never drink. This is because coffee contains polyphenolic compounds with antioxidant properties that protect the nerves. A report from the Coffee Science Information Society stated that drinking 3 to 5 cups of coffee a day can reduce the probability of Alzheimer's disease by 20%. Another 11-year tracking study found that coffee helps reduce the incidence of Alzheimer's disease, but its effectiveness decreases after 4 years. The study pointed out that caffeine and polyphenolic substances in coffee can prevent cognitive decline, resulting in fewer amyloid protein plaques in the brains of coffee drinkers. Is coffee carcinogenic? Not really. Some time ago, news of a certain brand of coffee causing cancer circulated on social media, causing many people to worry. Does coffee really cause cancer? Coffee beans produce a chemical called acrylamide during roasting, but this substance is present in all high-temperature cooked foods, such as potato chips, breakfast cereals, and biscuits. Moreover, the increased risk of cancer from acrylamide occurs only in mice, and its effect on humans is still inconclusive. Therefore, coffee is not to blame for causing cancer. In recent years, studies have also shown that coffee can prevent cancer. A study tracking 160,000 participants for 18 years found that compared to non-coffee drinkers, those who drank one cup of coffee a day had a 13% lower risk of liver cancer, those who drank two to three cups a day had a 38% lower risk, and those who drank four cups a day had a 41% lower risk. Who should drink coffee? Although coffee can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and prevent degenerative brain diseases and cancer, it is not suitable for everyone. The following three groups are advised to control their coffee intake. 1. People at high risk of osteoporosis. Caffeine inhibits the activity of phosphodiesterase, promotes bone absorption, and reduces bone density. Additionally, caffeine's diuretic effect increases calcium excretion. Therefore, people at high risk of osteoporosis, such as the elderly, pregnant women, and breastfeeding women, should pay attention to their coffee intake. 2. People with poor stomach health. Tannic acid in coffee stimulates gastric acid secretion and increases gastric irritation. Therefore, people with stomach problems are also not advised to drink coffee. 3. Pregnant women. During pregnancy, the metabolism rate of caffeine decreases, and the baby in the womb may also ingest caffeine. This can affect fetal growth and development and may cause chromosomal abnormalities and fetuses' abnormal development. In conclusion, most adults, as long as they don't have stomach problems or are not pregnant and have sufficient bone mass, can safely drink coffee. How much coffee can you drink every day? As for how much coffee you can drink a day, is it limited to one cup a day? In fact, coffee consumption is quite safe. According to recommendations from authoritative institutions such as the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the European Food Safety Authority, Health Canada, and the Australia-New Zealand Food Standards Authority, healthy adults can consume three to five cups of coffee per day without any adverse effects. For healthy adults, the recommended daily intake of caffeine is between 210 to 400 milligrams, which is roughly equivalent to three to five cups of coffee with each cup being 237 milliliters. As for pregnant women, it is not recommended for them to consume coffee. If they must, the daily intake should not exceed 150 to 300 milligrams, approximately two cups of coffee. Children and adolescents should also limit their caffeine intake, with a recommendation of not exceeding 2.5 to 3.0 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. Elderly individuals can consume coffee if they don't experience any discomfort afterward. Coffee can help increase alertness, raise blood pressure, and provide antioxidant benefits. However, excessive consumption or drinking too strong coffee is not advisable for the elderly, 
as it may affect sleep and lead to insomnia. Elderly patients with hypertension should avoid coffee, as it may increase blood pressure and risk of heart attack symptoms. Coffee stimulates gastric acid secretion and may exacerbate conditions like stomach ulcers. Therefore, individuals with gastric ulcers should also refrain from drinking coffee. Lastly, here are some additional tips for coffee consumption. Best time to drink coffee, it's best to consume coffee after breakfast or lunch. It can aid digestion and help break down high-calorie foods. Drinking coffee at night is not recommended because caffeine can stimulate the central nervous system, affecting sleep. Avoid sugar and creamer. Many instant coffee mixes on the market contain high amounts of sugar, and some even add trans fat powdered creamer. Drinking plain black coffee is healthier, as it avoids unnecessary sugar and fat intake. That's all for today's sharing. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content from Buddha Zen Wishdown, don't forget to subscribe and share. You're never alone here.